guys, Chad here from CNR Reviews. We are finally getting ready to do the Ruger LC9 review. Sorry guys, this review has been a long time coming. And we have had this gun for, uh, I'd say around three and a half months now. It has performed great. And we really wanted to make sure that we gave you guys a really good um, a review on this, that we tested the gun, made sure it is reliable and it's going to be a viable carry option. Uh, especially if you're going to be depending your life on this weapon. Uh, this is a 9mm subcompact. It falls into the same subcompact category as the Glock 26 and the Car CW9 and the CM9. And we're going to be doing some comparison videos between the CW9. I believe we already have one out between the Glock 26 and the show features. But um, this weapon has some really unique features that a lot of the subcompact guns don't. And if you're new to carrying a weapon, and let's say you've decided to become an armed, responsible citizen, um, this gun may have some attractive features that you may like. Um, it does have an exterior safety, which a lot of the subcompacts don't have. A lot of them rely on a really heavy trigger pull. Um, the exterior safety is here. You have to... Uh, red means fire. White means safe. Um, if you're going to use this exterior safety, and I know a lot of people, especially when you're new to handguns, uh, you want to have that almost peace of mind that the gun's not going to go off. But you really want to make sure that if you decide you want, are going to go with the LC9 that you train with that safety if you are going to use it. And that way to be able to pull your weapon, knock off that safety and pull the trigger. Um, the reason why I say you want to train with it is just that extra step. And sometimes, especially when you're in a really high stress situation, you may forget about that step. But the LC9 also has that long trigger pull, which is so common in all the subcompacts, where with the magazine in, and we're going to talk about that feature here in a second, you have this really, really long trigger pull and then a nice break. And so that is, that's actually the most common feature for all the subcompacts, and that's kind of becoming the standard is having that long trigger pull. So do you necessarily need to use that safety? No, you don't. Um, it does have a magazine disconnect, as you just saw, I couldn't pull that trigger unless the magazine was in the gun. So let's say you're in a fight, magazine comes loose, if you had a round racked, trigger's locked up, guys. does not work. I don't like that at all. Uh, I actually think magazine disconnect is the stupidest thing I have ever seen. And I know Ruger's not the only company that does this. Um, there are some other companies out there just offhand. I know Bursa does it. Um, and I don't like it. I know Ruger's done it on a couple of the other guns that they have. Not all of them, but some of them. And I think it's just a useless, useless um, feature. And so that means if I am in a fight, I can only pistol whip somebody with this gun. It's absolutely useless until I find that magazine and put it back in the weapon. Um, it also has another redundancy, and it is uh, the uh, bullet indicator. It's got this really large bullet indicator here. Pops up, says loaded one up. But also, it has a bullet indicator right next to the barrel where it, uh, for the chamber, we can actually see the cartridge. And you know what? You don't need two of them. Ruger could have easily have left this out and gone just with that, and that would have been just fine. Um, it does have, again, another unique feature, being able to drift that front sight, that front post. Now, that is something that um, a lot of the higher-end subcompacts have, such as like the CAR PM9, which is the more expensive version of the CM9. Um, most of the subcompacts are going to have the posted front sight, like the Glock 26, where you can't remove it. And this is a car CW9, just to show you in comparison, same thing. It's not adjustable, the front sight. Um, but all of these have, just like this one, the rear sight is adjustable. It just has an uh, Allen screw here. Comes with a supplied, um, actually, no, it doesn't come with a supplied Allen wrench to remove that. You have to have one of your own. And uh, then you want to take, Ruger recommends either a wooden dowel or some type of uh, plastic dowel to be able to punch that rear sight over and adjust it. Let's go and talk about reliability. Uh, I think reliability is super important when it comes to these subcompacts. And like I said, Ryan and I have put a, uh, a few hundred rounds downrange with this gun to make sure it is going to be reliable for you. Um, we did experience a failure that stopped the gun in its tracks. And we'll talk about that in a second. But... Within the first hundred rounds, the gun had functioned flawlessly, and I took it home to clean it, took the gun apart, and noticed that the guide rod was actually broken. So the guide rod that you see here is a stainless steel replacement. 
Yes, I could have went to Ruger and got a simple plastic replacement that would have been, you know, wouldn't have been too big of a problem. I could have either bought it from Ruger or they could have sent me one. Um, as long as you're within the warranty time, um, they probably would even send you one for free after if you really complained about it. But I thought I'd just go around that and solve the problem and stainless steel is the way to go. But it did break within the first hundred rounds. Now since then the gun has functioned again flawlessly the entire time. Um, I have experienced one other failure to fire and I was using a cellar and bellet round. I don't know if it was just a bad round but it happened one time and the uh, gun struck struck the primer the primer did not go off I'm attributing that to the round not the gun because it fed Magtech, Federal Champion, uh, Seller and Bellet, uh, Herders um, Select, Brass Casing so some of the crappier ammo it did, it did just fine guys um, also with hollow points fired hollow points perfect we were using the spear gold dots um, we didn't use anything else besides just the spear gold dots um, and that's just because that is our round of choice if we're going to be carrying in the 9mm. Um, other than that guys, let's talk about accuracy. Uh, accuracy is again super important when it comes to these little guns. Not because they have such a short barrel, but because of the triggers. And again, you're, with, with these type of guns with a long trigger pull, it's a very similar double action trigger pull. Um, you really want to make sure that you practice with these guns. Now with practicing with, with the LC9, me and Ryan were both able to get some incredible groupings. Actually Ryan even more so. I think it's just because he's had more experience with that long trigger pull. But man, he has gotten some killer groupings. Um, three round groupings within an inch. Um, inch and a half. And it is phenomenal guys. So I, I believe we did a accuracy comparison at the range um, between this and I believe the CM9 and I was shooting there. I got like a one and a half inch grouping. It, it was super accurate. And initially I had a lot of trouble with the trigger. I was shooting really low. Once I got the trigger figured out, it was dead nuts on. So I really want to thank um, a couple of our subscribers, I believe, had made comments saying, don't adjust the sights until you get a chance to really test that trigger. So thanks guys, I do appreciate the advice. You're 100% correct. Once I got the trigger figured out, I was able to put the rounds on target really well. So. Accuracy is phenomenal with this gun. It is definitely on par with the PF9, uh, which that is a gun that uh, uh, me and Ryan had always complimented on with the accuracy. may not have been reliable, but it was accurate. Um, let's talk about this as a viable carry option because I think it's super important. A lot of people are comparing this with the, with the kel PF9, and the LC9 is a couple ounces heavier. It's going to run in the 19, 19 and a half ounces loaded fully loaded up depending on what type of uh, grain of ammo you're going to be carrying but can you conceal this yes you can and I would say go with the LC9 over the PF9 because of that extra weight the gun is also really comfortable to shoot um, and even though it does have the extra weight I can still throw it in my pants pocket my shorts pocket uh, cargo pants jacket pocket and it kind of just just fades away um, it's it's considerably lighter than the Glock 26 and some of the other heavier versions like the M&P Compact and the uh, Springfield XD. And so the LC9, again, I think is a, is a really good viable carry option. Um, it does come with one seven round magazine. So you got seven plus one in the chamber, eight rounds. And I think as long as you're using good quality ammo, the nine millimeter round is more than effective enough to knock down a target um, especially with shot placement, as long as you got good shot placement, and like I said, as long as you practice, this gun is ultra accurate. So do Ryan and I recommend this gun? Yes, we do. It is a great carry, carry option. One thing to think about if you are going to buy this gun is upgrading to that stainless steel guide rod before your plastic one breaks. Um, now, some of you may never have the plastic guide rod break. I think we just got a bad luck on that one. But it was an easy fix. Um, unlike some of the more troublesome fixes, such as like the PF9, we had a catastrophic failure. Well, we could not fix that. So it's important that if you do have something break, that's a fix like that. Just simply buying a new guide rod, tossing it in, and going from there. I am going to be putting up a, a disassembly and assembly video of the Ruger um, LC9. Or, yeah, of the Ruger LC9. And that way uh, you guys can get a, just a full video of us taking it apart and showing you how to do that. And then putting it back together 
and that should be up along with this review. Um, let's talk about price point real quick before we end the review, and it is, I bought this gun for about $350. With tax in our state, because our state sucks, um, I was looking at almost $380 after tax. But for $350 asking price, I thought that was pretty reasonable for this gun. I've seen it go as high in some of the big box stores like Cabela's and uh, whatnot, go as high as $400. Bucks. Do not spend over $400 for this gun. If that is the only option, um, you know, don't go over that, guys. Or do whatever you have to do to get it down, guys, because seriously, $400 is, is going to be the absolute max that I would pay for this weapon. Um, other than that, guys, Ruger LC9 is a great carry option. Now, when we're looking, you know, on our quest to find the best carry handgun, this is going to rank up in in the top, one of the top ones because of reliability, accuracy, and price point. I don't think you can beat it. So, thanks a lot for watching. This is Chad from CNR Reviews and the Ruger LC9 review. Thanks a lot.